सो वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग नाउ आई एम श्योर दैट यू मस्ट हैव रिवाइज यस्टरडेज टॉपिक सो वॉट वी डू नाउ इज बिकॉज टूडे दे बी सो मच बट लेट्स रिवाइज सम ऑफ द सीलियंट फीचर्स वॉट वी रिवाइज टू यस्टरडे सो इट वॉज वी वर टॉकिंग अबाउट एपिथीलियम करेक्ट एंड इन एपिथीलियम वी लर्न समथिंग दैट वन वॉट वॉज कॉल एज द स्क्वामस एपिथीलियम ट्रू एंड इन स्क्वामस इट वॉज दैट न्यूक्लियस वॉज फ्लैट एंड एंड देन वी सॉ एग्जाम्पल्स ऑफ इट सो दिस वॉज अवर फर्स्ट पार्ट देन सेकेंड वी सॉ वॉट कॉल एज द कॉलमनर and in both these cases they were simple simple means only one layer and the nucleus was big right big round nucleus and after this we talked about something very important one of the important thing was that dynein that's a protein which is so important that it is leading to that movement of those villi true and in case if those villi they are not moving properly so it was leading to certain things like one because mucus is not moving right so in that case it leads to what's called as the chronic sinusitis it leads to even a respiratory condition called bronchiectasis in which case there is a heavy sputum bronchiectasis in both these cases because the movement of that secretion is not there so it is getting accumulated third thing when we applied our stethoscope on his chest piece we suddenly realized yes we suddenly realized that oh yeah i'm sorry you are right cuboidal right that's right that was cuboidal true thank you thank you and right bronchiectasis and this was situs inversus that's when we realized that everything is on the opposite side and we figured out that this could be what's called as the carta jenner syndrome syndrome means where there are combinations of so many things and this told us one more important thing that there is a possibility that this person might be sterile so it means this particular subject is unable to conceive so this is very important right so this was in nutshell our entire entire yesterday's topic today we'll be covering bit of more ground right so let's start with so let's start with cuboidal no columnar <laughs> that's right right it is columnar because cuboidal we clear yesterday that's fine so here we are dealing with now first thing that is simple columnar and today we'll be watching everything simple columnar and in then we'll be watching stratified squamous stratified cuboidal stratified columnar pseudo right pseudo stratified that also and finally the transitional in both these cases we said that in case of pseudo it looks like as if there are multiple layers actually it is one layer so only the thing is that on the basement membrane all the size of the cells they are different so <clears throat> it looks like that all their nuclei they are at a different level so we feel that okay there are multiple cells right actually 
it is one layer so that's what we'll see in case of pseudo stratified and transitional well it is a transition from squamous to say cuboidal how come right because when the bladder is full or when the bladder is stretched so that's what we'll see as it comes so here is our today's session immediately you'll notice that we have written something non ciliated because when it comes to columnar right it is easy to identify a columnar because its nucleus will be elongated its nucleus will be elongated so we'll come to know immediately that this is columnar but then it is non ciliated well to begin with it is non ciliated so actually everything will look, look same right but when we'll see the ciliated that means we would expect some thing like this but not at this point of time because when it will be all these small micro projections we shall be calling them villi right but right now there are no villi now this is one important sign which we'll be using frequently say for example as we proceed in our in our say series of learning let's say we are going for some dissection right now in dissection there will be one after the another images but all the images they will be in a sequence right so in sequence as you remove the skin let's say you are dissecting anterior abdominal wall so we'll say that okay this is when we put a put one incision we remove the skin and then there is superficial fascia we remove the superficial fascia but then there will be series series of images one after the another so what we shall do is let's say this is image number 1 now every time to write it like that skin is to be removed right it becomes boring it becomes boring will not do this thing right what we shall do is what we shall do is something like this whatever the structure which we really want to cut we'll just write skin and we'll put a cross this will give us big advantage because as we'll proceed in our dissection say sometimes you might have to cut three or four or five muscles just to go into the deeper section so all we need to do is we'll just write the name of those muscles and then we'll put a cross so this will be like our universal communication language between me and you that whenever on the top we write something and we cross it that means those structures they have been cut and removed so what we are watching is next to it right another important point whenever whenever it would come like say this is important when i say this is important i'll be making a star near it i'll be making a star near it. this star means what this star means that it is okay to forget everything but if you forget this point then it is a crime right so that would be the importance as these points they are frequently asked in any of the exams now i would say that let's say you are the examiner let's say you are the examiner when you are the examiner how would you what would be your mentality will your mentality be to fail the entire batch unless someone is so sadist right your intention would never be like to fail the entire batch will will your intention be to justify those students who have really worked very hard yes so remember all the exams whatever the exam whatever any one tells you that this exam is tough this is that this it is for everyone right i am preparing you for all the toughest exam because once you understand the pattern you'll find that yes they are logical they are so logical it is fine had i been to that place i'll be doing i must have been doing, doing the same thing exactly in the same style right so every exam every exam will be having at least 50% of the questions which would be like not easy but they would be like 
easy to attempt and chances are very high that you will be correct in those cases. There might be some bit of trickiness but usually if you have read recently properly there won't be much of the difficulty in answering those questions. The second part another say 15 to 20 percent of the portion is like where they will really check that have you understood the topic well because it is like a concept right it would be like a concept so if you have understood it properly you will be able to answer so roughly about 70 percent though it is like this now in last 30 percent the 10 percent to 15 percent is where it will be given in the book it will be present in it but it would be at some deep corner so those who have read properly they can answer it and this last portion is just to knock out your ego sometimes we feel that i have learned so well that i should be able to answer everything well the ego of examiner or ego of student that is still a question because yes, they don't want that you should be getting 100%. But there are few guys, those who get it. <coughs> Sorry. But yes, this portion would be real tough. So see one thing. When we talk about that it is tough, it is tough in only this much area. Why we get in trouble when we make mistake over here? Because it is this portion where no one is committing mistake. And if we make mistake, then we are in soup. We are in trouble. We are in bad trouble. Right? Seriously. So, why it happens? Because it is called as the percentile. You understand the meaning of percentile very well. Right? Very well. So, as per the number of students and their scores, your position is finalized. So, if there are out of 1000 students, say 600 students they have answered this section very well and in case if we make mistake then our percentile is going to be go going to be low and then there starts the trouble so my idea is first to prepare you now it cannot be done overnight so first to prepare you for this much portion this 50 percent so you will be literally killing it no way anyone can shake you on those first 50 percent then the conceptual part as you will be developing this habit you'll be sailed through up to this point from this point onwards right i'll be teaching you all the skills i'll be teaching you all the tools but then from this point onwards it's like you have to fly so i'll teach you how to fly right but actually flight is to be taken by you so this is where you will be going to the greatest of the heights. Right? So let's plan very systematically. Why I could have started any of the thing. But I started with histology. Because when you see the histology. When you see those slides. right? When it is said that okay this is, this is biceps muscle. Right? This is trapezius. It's so obvious. It looks like. Histology is something that in every chapter. Right? There would be histology. And literally, it, it happened with me, right, when, when I was in MBBS and it was to be drawn. So literally, we used to draw it like that in, in hostel, right, in one of that table. And we used to that these are the cells. And those cells, they were going like this, right. Who cares? Who cares? Now we realize, kare, <laughs> we were making the entire khichdi. That there were few squamous, there were few cuboidal, there were few columnar and, and, and nuclei. We nuclei, so it was like, like this. We used to do like this. Right? And then teacher used to say, what type of nucleus is this? What type of nucleus is this? And we used to say that they both look same. But now when you know that there is no nucleus like this and this cannot be so eccentric means going towards one side it has got a meaning that's the reason that we are going into this depth so today our speed will be bit high 
right? Where, because we'll be able to see, we want to see so many other structures. But at any point, right, if you feel like that, yes, you want to you want to ask something, just let me know, right? Otherwise, I'm not keeping the chat off. It is on only. So, because I really liked discipline of all of you yesterday. It was fantastic. I really liked it. Means, I mean, during the entire session, not a single unnecessary comment was there. So, so sensible. That's really, really very good. Right? Okay. So, chalo. Let's start with simple columnar. Simple means it is one layer. Columnar, yes, this would be the shape. And we have already discussed that nucleus would be elongated. So now we really want to see this thing. So here it is, single layer of columnar shaped cells. Round or oval shaped basal nuclei, they are dark stained. Yes, they will be dark stained. Large amount of cytoplasm, obviously cytoplasm over here. It would be all cytoplasm because cells are big, right? And there would be present of goblet cells. What is this new creature? Goblet cells. Well, let's keep it aside. When it will come, we'll see. Right? Let's start. Presence at. Where are they present? Well, digestive system. Stomach to anal canal. Everywhere. Microvilli in intestine. Gallbladder, uterus, uterine tubes, excretory ducts. Okay. Right? Let's see. Here it is. Coming up. The first part that is duodenum. Okay, now when we say that digestive system, right? So let's let's clarify everything. That how exactly the digestive system is arranged? Because we don't want to take chance. When we say duodenum, so where exactly is duodenum? So here it is, a simplest of the figure, right? Here it is. This is what, this is our esophagus. Whatever we eat, it goes over here. Then from this point, right, here it is. Here it is what? Yes, it is that our stomach. This stomach, it starts with this point and then over here, this curved part. This is what is called as the duodenum. So I'll keep on writing also. So this is esophagus. Right, esophagus. This one is stomach. We are not going into the detail of parts of stomach, etc. Because every topic, every organ is a huge topic. So esophagus, big topic. Stomach, enormously big. This duodenum, duodenum to is a fantastic topic. Because so many structures are associated with it. We will come to that. Right. And then this is like a C. And, and then there are all those intestines right they are long intestines so I'm just not making them very long and here it is right so these are all intestines which intestine they are called as the jejunum jejunum right and the ileum ileum okay so duodenum jejunum ileum and then it comes to that pocket where this ileum ends Right, it ileum ends, and this area is called as the cecum. It is called as the cecum. From here, that very well known appendix is there. Right, we must have heard about appendix. So it is that which is over here. From this point onwards, this is a large intestine. So it goes up because it is going up. So we'll call it ascending colon. Right, it is going up, so we'll call it ascending colon. Right, then it goes transverse. Right, so it is going on the opposite side. To make things simple, I'm I'm not drawing it exactly of its size and shape, but this is for our understanding. So that's what is called as the transverse colon. Because we'll be watching every organ section. Right. So that's why we are understanding that it should come in our mind that what exactly are we talking about. Because at any point if I say that okay this is the section into say sigmoid colon, we will feel very sigmoid colon. Now if that picture won't be created into our mind, this thing goes waste. Because unless and until that picture is in our mind, we won't be happy. right? So that is transverse colon and then it goes down. Right, it goes down. If it goes down, when it was going up, we were calling it ascending colon. Now, when it is going down, we'll call it 
very right descending colon right it is called as the descending colon and then there would be sigmoid colon and rectum and finally the anal canal right finally the anal canal now during this entire journey there would be few other structures from here that is this is right that that was duodenum and in in between right this duodenum there is a structure which is on the posterior aspect which is behind these structures so that's why i've drawn in yellow it is behind and this structure is nothing but very important very vital structure and that is pancreas okay now this tail of pancreas this is called as tail right so you'll come across such names at many of the places head of pancreas and tail of pancreas yeah, but it happens it will come and over here there is a one more structure it is spleen this is spleen very important because if that that someone hits the lathi right someone hits the lathi on the left hand side and if the spleen breaks this is a highly vascular structure highly vascular it would bleed like anything a question comes that why should it bleed it is because the biggest artery is aorta right aorta straight away it comes from the heart <clears throat> right this is aorta abdominal aorta thick big tube like artery and from there there is one branch which is called as the celiac trunk that is what is called as the celiac trunk and one of the branch of that is the splenic artery right it is splenic artery which which is going all the way to the spleen now imagine aorta is under superly high pressure and then straight away this artery is coming out of it so it means this will be under tremendous pressure and then there are some plexuses plexus means one artery second artery right they all are mixing that's what is called as the plexus so in case if anything happens to spleen it would bleed like anything because of this one important fact okay and there is one more structure which we must know and that structure is that structure is that's right it's liver right because liver was telling since long that you are talking about me so much but you have never drawn me right so this is the liver and over there there would be gall bladder right gall bladder as we talked about that gall bladder's function is to store and concentrate the bile concentrate the bile and it is this bile which is used when we eat any of the butter substance right any of the fatty substance so it is this bile which uses the process what's called as the process of saponification it's like if we really want to clean our dish in which we have eaten all those oily substances so any amount of water you put right it would <laughs> yeah sigmoid colon is also present yeah that's true so any amount of water you put right it won't be clean but this is with the process of saponification it is broken down into smaller components and then it is cleaned right so these are this is how the basic outline so now it would much be much easier that when we say let's see duodenum jejunum and ileum they are part of small intestine right so duodenum jejunum and ileum they are small intestine and on the all the way from cecum to the sigmoid colon to rectum to anal canal till this end this entire thing that is what is called as the large intestine right that will be the large intestine as we proceed we see so here is our first one this is our duodenum right and and what we are interested in we are interested in looking at these columnar cells right so let's say these columnar cells so we would like to see them over here 
Now, even at this point, right, this is not a very high magnification, but even if you focus slightly, right, in this area, right, let's say we focus in this area, it looks like that they are all quite long, right, as compared to others, they are quite long. Let's zoom it. Yes, this is giving us a very nice picture, right, what a pattern, right, if we just focus on this, with beyond doubt, it is seen that yes, they all are elongated cells, right? All the way, right? All the way. Watch it anywhere, 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 right? They are like that. Let's zoom it further. So beautiful, right? Beyond doubt, we, you just can't miss it. See the cell. What's the size, right? Big one, big one, big one. And the nuclei, they are well elongated. And these are what's called as the simple columnar layer is one and they are columnar and we don't find anything like brush villi over here right they are not there so that's why we are telling it non-ciliated fair enough here it is right a complete oil immersion that is 100x and now though it is it is like their selfie right they have taken their best of the shot but during this entire phase watch something like this something like this these are the goblet cells these are the goblet cells so just do remember that in our digestive system these are the goblet cells and their appearance is very classical so just by look at it say you'll understand that they are for secretion yes they are for secretion and these goblet cells they are the hallmark like that we are dealing with the digestive system right so no confusion in this let's see further here is stomach now it is written cardiac end right so that means there is another end also yeah there is another end so over here when we were drawing the heart right this is cardiac end and this one is the pyloric end so we are now dealing with this part cardiac end now from esophagus right from esophagus to stomach so we are now dealing with that cardiac end see as we go down and here it is right see how nicely they are arranged but their pattern is bit different slightly different and here is a complete zoom we understand that yes that's the cell that's one cell this is like another cell right? so their nuclei they are not that but still the size of the cell is big and these nuclei right they are also quite big but all these nuclei they are basal nuclei basal they are towards the base but definitely from the shape itself we understand that this is has to be a columnar cell right so that's columnar regarding this gallbladder once again we don't have to even worry about as the picture is so classical see we are watching that zoom image a big one big cell and and very properly very nicely all those elongated elongated nuclei right a long long big big cell perfect right see so good so gallbladder is also very fine comes to intestine right let's see as we zoom but even in this much also it has started conveying that yes we are dealing with a columnar right here it is right no doubt definitely definitely columnar right definitely columnar so now from this point if i tell you that how will you describe you should be able to speak at least these three points one what is the shape of the cell right second what is the shape of the nucleus now everyone would speak this much you would not forget this third that how much cytoplasm is there now there is not not a very big rocket science because the cell is big so there has to be more cytoplasm right 
what's the big deal in that but it looks stylish right when you say that the shape of the cell is columnar it's a large cell and it has got an elongated nucleus which is dark stained are baba nucleus is always dark stained right these are h and e stains they are always dark stained there is no big deal in that but yes you will say that it is dark stained and the amount of cytoplasm is enormous right see it changes the whole flavor right this would be your description now why i am telling you this why such description say everyone would talk about the shape and the nucleus in viva when you say this thing you are slightly different than others right this is where it will take you to one step higher because that examiner if you are the examiner everyone is coming and saying the same thing large cell columnar dark stained and this is how the nucleus looks like so actually mentally you will be bored but the moment some gentleman comes and he tells that yes there would be large amount of cytoplasm there would be an extra attachment you will feel that yes this guy is he said something good something extra though it is so obvious but this is where you will be playing with the psychology of that interviewer psychology of the examiner so that's what i was telling you about that at a later stage i talked about in one of my lectures in last these 4 5 days only that yes i am planning for one entire session how to face any of the interviews because when you go for all those exams there would be always an interview because you will be evaluated live when you are evaluated live you just can't bluff right you should know the subject but then how to smartly present that content that is up to you that is what will give you so much of advantage so we will we'll definitely plan for it but time to time i'll keep on telling you that such important points should not be missed and see as all of you are at your place right so no worries whenever this any of the image is shown immediately you could have said that yes let's speak on it and you start speaking so that way as if you are talking to me one to one that's what the purpose is okay see and we say that these high resolution images they are all like selfies yes actually they are like right? how smart these cells they look like right so precise as if they all are standing in a row like a march past right here it is now we move on to the uterus now in uterus see there are so many other structures also but as we draw our focus towards focus towards the cell yes it becomes obvious yes their cells they are bigger no doubt about it that it is it is it is right see they are all columnar but their nuclear yeah they are big big nuclear at undergraduate level no one would tell you that okay compare the nuclei of say cells of uterus and the nuclei of say duodenum no no one would tell you that right don't worry about it at times you are very much tempted can can we can we learn that also yes you can but my teacher taught me one very nice thing that let's say causes of headache right there can be craziest reason for this headache craziest reason to remember all the reasons of all the causes of headache itself is a big headache yeah there can be such conditions that you will you will come it will it would come like that it will occur one in 1 lakh people one in 10 lakh people 1 million people why to do that why to do that because if you think of rare reasons na then you are rarely right that's what my teacher taught me that if you think of rare things you are rarely right think of the commonest thing first commonest this is important so in book to yes book that author has written everything everything he wants to dump the entire 
thing so that to make his book look complete. Now, there is no discretion whether this book would be read by someone who is just beginning to learn medical science or someone who is really, say, interested in going into depth. Now, so there is a difference between a textbook and the reference book. But sometimes we are carried away so much, right? We try to go into depth and depth. No, think of the commonest thing first. This is what I am planning to prepare. You will never be going wrong in the basics. You will never be going wrong into the commonest thing. So that way it will take your confidence to very high level. And then you keep on adding something extra to it. And that's how you make your knowledge more and more interesting. right? So over here, at least say what we learnt in last two days, you will you will agree that yes, now you won't be making any mistake in identifying the size of the cell and the nucleus. Right? Here it is salivary gland, mucin secreting salivary gland. Salivary gland, there are three, right? They are like parotid, submandibular, and sublingual, right? Sub mandibular, sublingual and the parotid. Parotid is the biggest one. So a normal one but even our eyesight is good enough to figure it out that we are dealing with those long cells and their nuclei they are at just at the base. Right? Let's zoom it slightly and we agree. Yes, it is like that. Right? All these nuclei Right, all these duct duct duct, right? They all are arranged over here, and these are the single again, those soldiers they are standing with absolute discipline. So good. And here is the self image, right? Good, big cells, no doubt about it. So that's what was like non ciliated simple columnar epithelium. And now it has generated enough curiosity that if these were non-ciliated, how these cilia look like? Because now our curiosity for that columnar has ended. We know that these are the type of cells and then there would be various types of but big nuclei. They are there. Now how these cilia look like? Okay. So let's start with ciliated. Rest would all be quite similar. So single layer of columnar shaped cells, round or oval, dark stained, everything is large amount of cytoplasm. But this is the point, presence of cilia and they will be extending from the apical surface. It means this is the cell, so that's what is called as the apical surface. So we expect to, to look something like this, that something like this should appear. Okay, let's see, bronchi, our respiratory system, right, as they divide. So, here it is seen, okay, it looks like columnar cells, those nuclei, but still regarding those villi, no, not very sure, let's zoom it. Yes, as we zoom it, we find that some things are like the right, right, those small, 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 small things, right, let's zoom it further. Oh, yes, see how nicely it looks, say that's the cell, right, that's okay. And see over here, focus on something like this in this area. Focus on this area. Now see, now I'm I'm raising it, and now see, <coughs> right? And if we zoom it still further, clean, done. That's the cilia. See, these are the all projections. These are the projections. And you will see it throughout the bronchi. Fallopian tube, we talked about it, right? That that's the uterus. This is the fallopian tube. And function of the fallopian tube was that when this fertilized ovum is moving, because this ovum, it gets implanted into the posterior wall of this fundus of the uterus. So it has to be brought safely over here so there has to be, say, nutrition to be provided during this entire journey. So that's what these cilia are doing. They are just pushing that mucus so that that lymph which is supplying enough nutrition to this fertilized ovum. 
so here it is we do expect that there has to be cilia let's say yeah say even even before we go to the high resolution we have already started watching it right let's zoom the same image and here it is so clean right no doubt about it these are all cilia still higher resolution yes right seen and see the cells they are pretty big those those nuclei they are pretty big right pretty big nuclei some are round some are long but finally they all are big so this was ciliated so that's how the cilias they would look like so once we have completed this now our curiosity is toward what looks like that pseudo stratified pseudo stratified is like that some cells we expect that they will be bigger uh, should you write this well ideally i feel so right say how will you make the notes say if you have attended that session of super reading right i would make the notes like this say say for example i would make notes something like this say epithelium right epithelium and then we say squamous epithelium and over here we say cuboidal epithelium we over here say columnar epithelium in squamous there is simple squamous and there is stratified right stratified in stratified we have got one two three more number of layers in simple there is one layer so see i am making all these images so that i have to write list this is what we learned during our super reading session that when your brain is telling that okay 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 i understood that you are talking about stratified no need to write s t r a t i f i e d no these notes are for you so in cuboidal i've just written c u b bus enough if in is enough and it's completely fine if i write simple and i write stratified bus now someone say this stratified this str can mean straight can can mean so anything but no in this contact it has to be stratified right because this is simple and just for knowledge i am i am doing this so it means it has got more layers it has got less layers right and how is the nucleus nucleus is i'll make this thing right i'll just make this thing this is giving me the understanding that this is the big round it looks like that it is big it looks like that it is round so then why to write don't write write least number of write draw everything graphically like this it will make entire thing very very easy right so this is yes and and for the reference for the all those images now all these images what you are watching they are directly from my from my microscope right we have got so that's the reason it is happening like the same image we are getting the magnification of the same image it is the same tissue to give you the best of the clarity right so pseudo stratified in this our our purpose is differing heights that's the idea differing heights so nuclei they will be located at different levels goblet cells are common both ciliated non ciliated type exist so all right in case of pseudo these are the points because rest of the things so we have understood okay where do we expect to see well trachea and upper respiratory tract they are ciliated see in case of respiratory system ciliated surely ciliated because that's where the mucus is moved and sperm carrying ducts epididymis vas deferens they are non ciliated because there the movement is for different purpose right so let's see this thing how they look like so trachea that's trachea right and as we go deep and as oh bas here to it is It has already started showing that there are cilia, but this time our focus is on on these cells. See the cells. The look itself is telling that as if there are so many layers, right? So many layers. See, 
they all these nuclei they are all at different levels they are at different levels so that's what it is seen so can it be that can we confuse it with stratified when there will be multiple layers well wait for it right that's the topic which we will be touching next because in case of stratified right in case of stratified that means where there are actually in so many layers things would look very different it would actually look like as if there are multiple layers and we will be able to see those layers here you are watching only few nuclei and these nuclei they are not arranged precisely into one layer nor they are looking like as if they are arranged in multiple layers they are just ups and downs ups and downs so that's what is called as the pseudo stratified it looks like that there are multiple layers but actually it is one layer and in this case we are having cilia over here correct see the epididymis very important from the point of view of say this point see these are the big cells right big cells and we can watch large large nuclei true vas deferens again male reproductive system and as we go into the depth we find that see the nuclei they are arranged right at different levels but technically speaking all of them they are in one layer only just the size changes right? so this is this was pseudo stratified now is the time to see to see stratified squamous so long awaited our stratified squamous where we'll be watching multiple layers so that's the new keyword which has come up multiple layers nuclei they will be distributed throughout obviously because if for every cell there is nuclei right so they will be distributed throughout basal cell cuboidal columnar metabolic active metabolically active metabolically active and these are the apical cells which are flat they will be squamous keratinize type don't worry about it we will just see it one small point that about orthokeratotic and parakeratotic just remember ortho right chances are high that we might forget the differentiation between that but when i write anything like ortho right ortho keratotic right okay that's okay but this o it looks like zero correct it looks like zero zero means nothing zero means nothing that means no nucleus now it is so easy i'll show you what is keratinization right but if the nucleus is not seen nucleus is not seen so immediately just by the look and you say that this is orthokeratotic type it looks so stylish right so precise but you have remembered it like this is zero zero means no zero means no no nucleus and then if the nucleus is seen so that means nucleus is present so when it is present it is parakeratotic so p is for present zero is for absent easy right so that's how we remember this is what is called as the association time to time i'll keep on telling you about all these things and all what i am telling is something which has been implemented and that's how i even remember i'll tell you even that also right otherwise initially yes there was a problem right when i used to learn hard right it used to happen like 
a left left heart right heart where is pure where is impure it gives confusion but the day i thought it like this that okay this is l e f t right this is r i g h t so here this is oxygen here this is co2 that means in case of heart whenever there are less alphabets so this is having less alphabet these are the r i g h t more alphabets co2 has got more more alphabet then add it to it this is what is called as the pure blood right this is what is called as the impure blood yes true right no problems at all now there cannot be any confusion it means that for right side from where the blood would come from where the blood would come it has to come from the entire body because entire body has used up entire body has used up the oxygen and it is now dumping that co2 blood into the right atrium right now obviously when you will be learning heart you will be watching the dissection then you will be coming across so many cardiac condition this that so obviously you will never be making a mistake that supia vena cava and infia vena cava they will end up in right atrium no problems at all but when you start like this so at least this much portion is now beyond doubt it is clarified so even when you are speaking in the back of your mind it would look like that when you are dealing with pure blood immediately it will look like pure means co2 that means we are dealing with left heart right this will give you a very big advantage and when we say that when we have got impure blood so it has to be sent to to whom to lungs so okay this means our right ventricle will be sending the blood to the lungs right and we learnt one more thing what and that was anything which is going from heart to organ heart to any of the organ so we will call it artery okay so that means this is heart to lungs that means it is a pulmonary artery hai na pulmonary artery yeah it is pulmonary artery because we said that artery means what artery means heart to lungs heart to organ so in this case heart to lungs so when it is asked okay tell me one artery which is having deoxygenated blood now this looks like a tricky question but it is so simple anything from the right side right so this is which will be carrying carbon dioxide and it will be going to lungs and it will be fine so in these lungs they'll purify everything and then they will send this blood back into the left side so because this left side is pure oxygen and anything which goes from organ to heart it is called as vein so we'll call this thing as pulmonary vein so which pulmonary vein which vein has got pure blood pulmonary vein right because it will be carrying oxygen and then now the rest of the journey is easy so this is left atrium it goes via mitral valve left ventricle and from here the aorta comes out and it goes into the entire body knowingly unknowingly you have completed cardiac cycle right you have completed cardiac cycle in case of fetus there will be few variation because heart of that baby which is inside the womb of the mother it is the mother's blood mother circulation which is helping all the way through so this is how we'll also cover that also right that is what is called as the fetal circulation okay so here it is this is what is called as the association i just wanted to emphasize the word association how you link every time you keep on linking it that way you will never create a blunder right because now when you know that zero zero means no zero means no so this means orthokeratotic will not be having any nucleus and parakeratotic this is p p means present so that means it will always be having the nucleus retention of nuclei now you go into the depth that what really happens in orthokeratotic and parakeratotic how the layers move how the nuclei is everything okay you are not making mistake in the basics true here it is let's see orthokeratotic will not be expecting any nuclei and this way all the cells 
right all the cells if you watch right they are just just like this nothing is seen Com compared to that parakeratotic we shall be watching see these are the nuclei right these are some some nuclei which can be seen so imagine this picture and and this picture you just can't make a mistake right where no nuclei so you will know that it is ortho and when there are nuclei present you call it para keratotic right see as we zoom it such big nuclei when these such big nuclei are seen your your judgment becomes much much easier okay this is esophago gastric junction very interesting this is the point which we are talking about this is the point right esophago gastric junction above it is esophagus below it is gastric that is the stomach now esophagus and stomach they both have got completely different architecture and as we go into the deep as we zoom out as we zoom out see what we watch what we really watch is so many layers right and see what our main purpose is our main purpose was stratified stratified means multiple layers right multiple layers is what we really want and then don't forget the squamous so in squamous the nuclei they were all flat so it means we are now expecting multiple flat nuclei at multiple levels true see see here now this thing won't look like <clears throat> that pseudo in pseudo the, there were just two three layers here too, there are so many layers right so many layers and we can say that all these nuclei they are flat they are flat right they are neither big round nor they are elongated like this right they are neither like this nor they are like this but right? they are all flat flat still further here it is and this tells us that yes there are multiple layers multiple layers one key question that when this is the basement membrane one layer and on top of it there is second layer and on top of it there is third layer so what should we consider that this is what type of tissue what type of epithelium are we dealing with we'll always watch what is the top one so in this top one we see that all are flat when they are flat yes this is we are dealing with we are dealing with the squamous stratified squamous same thing in case of vagina say here is all these nuclei right now the, say because it is thrown in folds right it is thrown in folds but we can see that nuclei they are like flat similarly in anal canal right see the nuclei right see the distribution will keep on changing right it would happen actually when we'll be discussing about all of these thing in depth we'll be discussing that what type of basement membrane what type of muscles are there what type of other nuclei what are the other other structures everything will come into picture but our current focus is to make you completely clear with those nuclei right so we can say whether distributed more or less but nuclei they are like this right they are squamous and at multiple layer and that would take us to this judgment same way over here see they are all all situated similarly into the scalp as we go into the deeper and deeper layer of scalp as we go to the depth we find right this is not very nicely stained it is bit dark stained 
but that's also that is from the scalp scalp is your head right? moving on to the stratified cuboidal let me bring it to you stratified cuboidal stratified cuboidal so two layers of cell nuclei round in two layers apical layer is cube shaped these are for all those sweat glands right these are the sweat glands okay sweat glands salivary glands and the mammary glands there is a speciality in all of them the speciality is that if this is the cell right it is the apex of it which secretes and that secretion would go into the specific duct so whether it is sweat gland or salivary gland or the mammary gland or breast right here it is so let's zoom it right we go still further we go still further and here it is right see the shape the shape has become quite rounded shape well we can we see some flat also yes we do watch we do watch but most of them they are like flat this they are like this round right round big nuclei and how they really go say so this is a duct it is in this duct the entire secretion is going to occur right so we are now dealing with those apical layers right apical layers say let's say parotid duct so this is the entire duct and from here the secretions they are going inside right and as we zoom further as we zoom here it is here it is seen with very good clarity so see here the secretion secretions they would be going into the duct and we are talking about the topmost layer and these topmost layer they are surely big rounded nuclei and they are like in in two layer this is like one layer this is like a second layer right? no doubt there are few others also right but mostly it is like two layers a very fine picture so that's why i'm just removing everything i drew on it so that you can say even see at a later stage when you feel like here it is right so this is what is called as the stratified cuboidal similarly in the mammary glands let's zoom further further yes here it is beyond doubt these are all circular big circular nuclei so that is stratified cuboidal quickly we are now going to stratified columnar here it is stratified columnar now you are expert in picking up those those keywords right so two or more layers of cells nuclei round plus many rows apical layer columnar shaped cells that's that's what is needed apical layer columnar shaped cells yes that's the rule which we made right that in case if there are more layers right so it it might look like that the basal layers they are flat but what we are dealing with those topmost layers so those topmost layers if they are columnar we shall call it columnar right will not be looking at other layers we'll just look at their nuclei that are they present and then there are multiple layers of it so largest duct of some glands and the male urethra some portion these are very specific type of cells so when we zoom it when we zoom it here it is right here it is some portion let's zoom it to this portion right see right 
here you will find that uh, say others at the base they are like round or anything but that's fine those who are on the top layers most of them they are these elongated these elongated so these are our stratified columnar epithelium right stratified columnar epithelium okay now when we said that epithelium was one right in our connective tissue topic epithelium was one and there were some others also like muscles right like muscles then there were say connective tissue connective tissue and this connective tissue was having everything it was having that bones it was having say muscle uh, those ligaments right etc and then there were nerves we talked about epithelium but in epithelium there was one another very important point was the glands glands there are various type of glands which will be functioning in differently some of the glands are like where the cell would be sacrificing itself and will be dumping itself into the canal so these are all various types of cells right which forms all different type of secretions deliberately i am not taking this topic today right we'll take this topic when you'll be absolutely fresh tomorrow morning so that's why instead of that today we are topping taking a topic again which is related to it only and that is muscle and because in any case we are supposed to finish that so we are taking this muscle now i have written this is a high yield topic yeah it is it is a high yield topic from this so many structures so many things can be asked so that's why this topic is of tremendous importance very very important topic and as it will be consisting of only the key words so let's pick it up right this is muscle special connective tissue yeah it is special the types of muscle we have already talked about that there are types of muscles which are like say striated muscle right striated because they look like that but the most important point they are under voluntary control you can control them other types are non striated so we can call them that they are smooth muscles these smooth muscles that means they are not under your control they are under the control of brain right so they are not voluntary right they are automatic and the third type is the cardiac muscle and i would always say that cardiac muscles are those who are self motivated because they will be there is no need of any external impulse to start it by itself it would keep on generating impulses and constantly it will keep on beating for decades and decades so that's the basic distribution so let's see type of muscles skeleton they are voluntary yes they are fibers they are long cylindrical and are parallel to each other it has to be it has to be now in this i'll also be teaching you the concept of exercise that what type of exercise one should do to get the best effect say in gym right you must be watching that those guys right and many times those girls even laugh also right they make all those curious sounds as if they are declaring to the entire gym that yes come on i am doing the exercise right and they will be doing with such heavy weights and then they they are even unable to carry the key of their bike right and they keep on doing sit ups i have seen people doing the sit ups 1 2 3 4 right rapidly they are doing it's a complete waste because what you are doing you are using what's called as the kinetic energy you are using the gravity now after explanation of these skeletal muscles i'll show you just two simple exercise you do it and tomorrow when you will come your muscles will be soaring there will be sore muscles you will feel that yes there is something what happened into your biceps something which happened into your abs yes you will feel that so 
instead of and and again with due respect to all the trainers but the best the best exam for fitness is acsm american college of sports medicine this exam is really tough it's like once you clear your mbbs you try to appear for this exam it's like you have to read you have to read this exam this breaks many of the concepts unfortunately say in our medical science the exercise physiology portion is very restricted there is just one chapter right just one chapter it has to be more because it is touching not only you it is touching whosoever is coming in contact because you will be able to explain to them so that's why this is the foundation so learn this and then i'll show you what exercise to do do it just 10 times and feel the difference okay so starting with skeleton this is the voluntary fibers are long cylindrical and i would say parallel these are the parallel fibers okay they see these are the parallel fibers right alternate dark and light bands that's why they are called as the striations that means they look like those strips right they are striations because one is dark one is light one is dark one is light so it looks like that they are all with some pattern right they look like a pattern dark bands some names are given so why why such names because these names are actually carrying a tremendous meaning the micro architecture of the muscle so at this point we'll just remember dark are a and light are i bands again chances are very high that your memory is good but my memory is not that good i'll definitely be confusing in exam the dark band was i or a i'll definitely be missing it so that's why instead of writing dark like this i started writing it like that d a r k bands now i cannot forget every time because it is your these are your own notes you are writing in your own style right <clears throat> yeah that's true that's true harshvardhan yeah so these dark bands right i always write it like this right a so now you just can't miss that thing yeah that's right light can pass through it etc there are so many yes there are reasons but this is like we are discussing with say in such a way that in a long run no one should forget even if someone is not knowing about all those details still you just can't miss and light how will you write now you know that how to write you'll write it like l i g h t bands correct so when you write it like this no way you will forget and then see there is a method to cheat your brain to put the least effort on your brain to put the least effort yes what he is writing is very true that i is for idiopathic because light can pass through it yes these are the scientific reason now there is something like that when the discussion is going on right your brain yeah i agree i agree right that's true they are considered as myosin everything is fine but what i'm telling is that when some discussion is going on right if you have got such shortcuts now so these shortcuts they will make you super fast the way say for example if i i'll show you one device right because it is something related to it i'm showing you one device as i said that i am into i am into say cyber security also and it now this is a device right this is a device right and you can activate it now these are 80 keys right these are all 80 keys and all of them they can be defined and all these keys they are having specific function and it's like you press one key and it will throw a series of commands that's what is called as the macros so macros make your life very easy 
So this is where we are making, we are trying to make these macros in our brain. So the moment we write like dark bands, in the brain it would be written like A and we say that A is, it is the A band, right? It will decrease the load. Remember, as such it is easy, right? But when the things will keep on piling up, when you will be learning anatomy and physiology and biochemistry and pathology and, and orthopedics and pediatrics and surgery, medicine, gynec obstetrics, radiology, see the load which will be keep on, will keep on mounting and then you will be expected that you should answer everything with the precision. This is where all such tricks would help, right? Uh, please don't messages like say anyone from Kazakhstan or anyone from here because it distracts gentlemen everyone so yesterday also I requested please don't put any of such messages please don't put any of such message right I don't want to specify the name but please don't do that right it deviates everyone from the topic right your discipline has been impeccable so good so please don't spoil it. Thank you. So here comes the nucleus which is peripheral and multinucleated. So here it is, right? The nuclei. Multinucleated. So many nuclei they can be seen, right? And we see that yes, they are like those, it looks like those parallel bands. Regarding the smooth muscles, they are non-striated. That's why they are called as smooth. Okay. Right. So this is the key. That over there they were parallel and then there were bands. It means there are no bands. There are no such bands. That's why if no bands, so they would look smooth. That's the reason. So it means it gives us the understanding that striated and smooth they are from their looks. Correct. And elongated tapering cells, they form sheets. There is a single central nuclei single central nuclei and where is it present muscular layer of digestive tract blood vessels right urinary system reproductive organs respiratory tubes inside the eye all of these are what all of these are those things which are under the control of brain it means it means that in brain in brain there is one is a system which is under your control but then there is another system which is called as the ANS autonomic nervous system and in that there is sympathetic and parasympathetic right now there would be tons of discussion on sympathetic and parasympathetic huge huge discussion all the drugs they will be related to it that some are supporting sympathetic, some are inhibiting sympathetic, some are supporting parasympathetic, some are inhibiting parasympathetic, some are very specific. Everything fine. If you understand this small concept, everything falls into correct order. What sympathetic? S for stress. Remember, S for stress. So whenever there is stress, right? Whenever there is stress, it is sympathetic will come into picture. Now imagine that in front of you as someone is standing with a gun will you feel like that I should be having a sandwich no no what will happen first your eyes will become bigger right you are trying to find out a place that from where can I run right so large amount of information should come into your eye so that it can be sent to brain for further processing that's the idea so here comes this eye so muscles of the eye they contract so that pupil is dilated now you are watching that i have to run right in order to run you will be requiring more amount of oxygen so you will not tell okay are lungs right lung and left lung both of you be ready and give me more oxygen because my next effort would be to run from here. No. Sympathetic system is there to take care of it. So it will tell respiratory tubes. Okay, okay. you guys dilate so that more oxygen is coming. Then it will tell blood vessels. 
all blood vessels right your job is now completely focused because forget about digestive system forget about all of them our main focus is to take care of brain take care of heart right because they will be working to best of their efficiency and accordingly the arteries and veins they will start constricting or dilating and that's how the whole process works and when parasympathetic eat and rest so the entire process would change right so that's the reason that this smooth muscles they are distributed across but every smooth muscle is under the control of brain right see how they look like they look like this right that's how they look like and the third one is the cardiac or the involuntary involuntary heart muscle right long cylindrical parallel to each other yeah quite there are alternate bands they are striations nucleus is central single but this is cells are joined by intercalated disc because this entire muscle has to act as one this is the key word so when you will be discussing when you will be learning the cardiac activity heart never beats like that like this right heart beats like this one single unit right the whole unit should beat together when you are say lifting those dumbbells right you are lifting those dumbbells because in that some of the muscles are involved some of the muscle fibers they are not involved when your hand is tired so then second group of muscle would take over so they'll work accordingly in this cardiac that's the point which you have to remember the whole unit would act as one and how can they really act as one by the disc it is like every muscle fiber is talking to each other okay i am ready i am ready yes contract and then they contract right so that's how they actually they talk with each other right there is very interesting mechanism that how those elect uh, those ions they transfer so that's how this cardiac muscle would look like and and if you see right if you see that see there is there are all these can you see the small small bands right these are all intercalated discs now if i if i just remove this you will be able to appreciate more easily see right that's one and then there are this 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 right such delicate structure which can easily be forgotten easily be say mistaken but these are like very important function as they will be leading to talking with each other right so that's what is called as the cardiac muscle all right so this was for today tomorrow we'll be dealing with bones ligaments and the connective tissue so actually the connective tissue part and the glands they will be taken and once we complete this right actually you have seen all the type of tissues all the type of tissues yes nerves also will that that's also there and will take that right so once we do this you will be pretty good in understanding that where the structures are how to remember it how to see it when when things are shown under the microscope right thank you oh yes exercise sorry <laughs> exercise so so nice regarding the exercise yeah sure 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 that's what i am now telling now this exercise you will remember first the principle of that exercise the first principle is never ever do the exercise with gravity helping you gravity should not help you eliminate the gravity how will you do that it's like let's say if this is a dumbbell right if this is a dumbbell so when you normally how do we do this we flex do this we flex and we do this don't do that right how will you do you will count now now important is right say so that's that's your arm and that's the dumbbell in your hand 
when you flex, right, this is the flexion, okay, this is the flexion. I'm just giving you the example for biceps, then same example, it can be implemented even on second exercise. So this is flexion, and when you straighten your arm, so that is, that is extension. So this part is easy. Now comes the point what you have to do. When you flex, right, see the wrong method of exercise. You flex, one, two, three, four, five, six, right, you, 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 you put, you shout, you, you, and, and then, ah, you release it. When you release it, the gravity is helping, so you are literally throwing the weight back. No. If you really want to do good exercise, it's like your stretch receptors, they should also be coming into picture, right? So when we'll be learning about muscle physiology, at that point, I'll, I'll explain that how these stretch receptors, they are so important. Because you don't want those muscles for show baji. Right? There is a difference in that the muscles which are just for show baji and the muscles which are having real power. There is one that people do exercise for the legs, but you tell them, can you run one kilometer? They'll be exhausted. They'll be dying just after running half a kilometer. What's the use of that muscle? Something which looks, but it cannot perform that's useless right now how will you do the exercise see so simple but so effective when you are flexing right flexing so that is when two surfaces of your body they are coming to knee and coming near to each other it is called as flexion so when it is for legs so when your heel is going towards your buttock it is flexion got it right so now let's see what will you do when you are doing with dumbbell count it like this say one two three four so this counting should be going exactly at the same pace so you will say one two three four and hold this is the point and hold you really want that your muscle should be crying right arnold schwarzenegger's book Right? What Arnold said is that even if you close your eyes and you focus on your muscle and then even without weight when you try to do that, right, your muscle will be generating exactly the same power. Same power. Now, now who can be the better person than Arnold Schwarzenegger? Because he was 11 times Mr. Universe and then the bodybuilding committee said that please boss, step down give someone else the chance can there be a bigger respect than that right so in his book he has mentioned that you talk to your muscle so that is another point but one two three four right that is during flexion so so just don't confuse this thing right one two three four i'll write it over here on the flexion side one two three four and then when you have to go back this time it should be half the pace decrease the speed or increase the count so now you will say 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 so you did it like 1 2 3 4 hold for 1 2 and then start the return journey. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And then repeat. If you do this, if you do this, you do only. Right now, after completion of this session, just take one liter of water bottle and try to do the exercise by this way. Just do it 10 times and just do such two sets, right? Two rounds. And with a gap of not more than not more than 30 seconds because you don't want to destroy the lactic acid which is getting accumulated right you really want this lactic acid it is the lactic acid which will be leading to stimulation of your growth hormone and it is this growth hormone which will give you the finest of the result all these advertisement companies what they say take the tablets of the growth hormone it's completely nonsense it is your body's own mechanism when you move it like this so this is the first exercise right this is the first exercise the second exercise which you should do crunch 
right? That is the abdominal crunches. And in that, never put your hands behind the head. No, don't do that. Because when you put your hands behind the head, chances are that you might be affecting your neck badly, right? You might sprain your neck. So instead, cross, cross your hands and put it on shoulder. Now your neck is free, right? And watch towards the ceiling. So your entire position would be something like this, right? Something like that's your head and your hands are on your shoulder. You are watching towards the sky and then you lift your body, right? Same pattern. When you are lifting your body, one, two, three, four, hold, one, two, and then go back slowly, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Again, start. Don't touch the floor all the way. Do such 10 and let me know tomorrow what happens. You'll, you'll be so happy with yourself because you'll start just in 10 crunches. Yes, in gym you might be doing 50 crunches. You do 10 crunches like this and then gap of not more than 30 seconds. 30 seconds is the limit because after that lactic acid advantage it starts going. And in gym sometimes you see that people do one round and then they are talking with someone talking on phone, right? And then they say, in the second round. This entire advantage is lost. So do these two exercises and see what happens, right? Yeah. For any of the say queries, please, please do write in comments, right? I'll answer them collectively. Definitely I'll answer them, right? So any of the problem, any of the query, please do write in that. Yeah, I'll, we'll, we'll do this thing tomorrow. You, you can just tell me the problem because tomorrow as such I'm planning to take it in slightly more depth, right? So just set, write it down into the, into, into the comment section because then what happens when things are written over there, it would be helpful for everyone, someone who is even reading only the comment, right? All right, so thank you so much. And we meet tomorrow exactly at the same time, that is at 10 a.m. Thank you so much. Take care and bye-bye.